This is a necessity for the time. This is quarantine food. Jamil Cromwell has been driving trucks for more than a decade, ever since he came back from a tour in Afghanistan with the Army National Guard. So you've heard the call of duty for your country before. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. yet, in many ways, you guys are the front lines keeping the right. We're one of the uh, we're, we're one of the essential people out there. Today, he's delivering deli supplies, a job these days that's not without risk. But with my microphone keeping us socially distant, Jamil tells me his worries lie elsewhere. My father, he's older. He's in his 70s, so we pretty much told him, stay in the house. If you need some, we'll go get it for you. Inside this massive warehouse at Stu Leonard's, a family-owned grocery chain in Danbury, Connecticut, the packed crates, a hopeful sign. Tom Enrico has worked here for over 40 years, but he says he's never seen anything like the COVID-19 outbreak. They just came out of Woodworks and was buying everything you have. We're out of toilet paper. We haven't had it for a couple weeks. Over the past few weeks, at least 46 states have closed their schools, and millions of Americans have been ordered to stay home. Life as we know it has come to a halt. One of the early and persistent fears, will there be enough food? Tonight, we're taking you on a farm-to-table look at our country's supply lines, meeting the oft-forgotten men and women on farms and in fields the truckers hauling goods on the open road, and grocery workers and cashiers, all unexpected foot soldiers, essential workers on the front lines in our battle against this pandemic. Each day before the first light has broken, farm workers from Florida to Wisconsin heading to harvest vegetables part of the more than 64 and a half million tons of produce produced every year. That's nearly 400 pounds per person. Many working despite their fears, like this woman who asked to remain unnamed. Our business is essential to the food supply. A lot of people in their work, they can work from home. Unfortunately, farmers don't have that privilege. In Florida, Jamie Weisinger's family has operated Lipman Family Tomato Farms for four generations. They're now facing down the challenges of COVID-19 one by one, implementing social distancing on the fields. We're reducing the size of our work crews. Then we realized that people have to go cash their checks and we don't want people all getting on a bus together and going into a bank to go cash their checks. We are trying to reduce the amount of trips that they have to go into town for to buy groceries or do their laundry. But communicating new COVID safety rules to farm workers, often migrant laborers, poses unique challenges. Most of these people are not in their homes. They're here in another country working for us. In our community, there are many indigenous languages. Gerardo Reyes Chavez has worked the fields for more than two decades. Now, as an organizer, he uses whatever means necessary to make sure the workers understand. We need to use methods of popular education so everyone understands what we are talking about. So there's drawings that have been uh, posted in different places in the community. <laughs> Nothing arrives on our store shelves without the three and a half million Americans who are truckers working round the clock, day and night, in this time of crisis. It's about 6.40. It's lightly snowing here. I'm headed back to Chicago from Kentucky. We want to let you know that the trucks are still moving. Many truck drivers taking it upon themselves to protect their health. When we're outside the truck, we do face masks. I don't even go into the truck stops at this point. Brittany no, Richardson from Kansas well. City, Kansas, has significantly altered the way she well, operates day to day. I have a whole decontamination procedure. I always glove up. Anything I might have touched during delivery, I just completely spray down. Despite all the challenges, Brittany says America's newfound appreciation for her line of work keeps her going. I get Facebook messages and posts and people just saying, hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for being out there. It means a lot to me as a driver, and I know it means a lot to other drivers as well.
But the nationwide lockdown is disrupting drivers' basic needs, with some rest areas closing, bathrooms and restaurants restricted. Right now, you're in the back of my tractor. I'm about Hanifa Sharif, a.k.a. Nifa Nee, is driving hundreds of miles from Georgia to Florida. I've made it to Florida, and it's still pretty normal, still busy. Here in Wildwood, Florida. Good morning. It's time to start my day. So I'm about to go inside of the truck stop, shower, and get me something to eat. The truck stop's quiet. Practice social distancing. The dining area nearly deserted. So it's closed. How far is this closed? Someone is open. Eat fresh. Driver lounge is closed until further notice. So no TVs for us. Shower one, that's my shower. But thankfully, the shower's still in service. Well, I like to write in my gratitude journal. Just As she overcomes the obstacles, Sharif counts her blessings. And I'm grateful that I am an essential worker and I get to work at a time like this when America needs us. The happiest time is when the load gets delivered. Todd Spencer is president of the Owner-Operator Independent Drivers Association and a former trucker himself. Can you reassure people that that supply line is going to stay open? Well, as long as there's product to move, believe me, there will be drivers make the, that make the deliveries. Drivers always come through, and they will this time, too. To keep supplies running, drivers need to stay healthy. Are you worried all about the health or the safety of your drivers? They are certainly aware that there will be a higher likelihood that they will be exposed. That's why here, just off the interstate in Knoxville, Tennessee, this urgent care clinic is providing evaluations and COVID-19 testing. This whole parking lot is for trucks, and so that means that they can drive in and they can be taken care of. We've been able to get all the appropriate PPE so that we're able to see them in this room without having any exposure to the rest of our patients. Grocery workers have begun testing positive for COVID-19 as well, raising concerns among some workers that they too need protective gear. How is mozzarella been selling, all right? Mozzarella is selling. Uh... Stu Leonard Jr., who heads the family grocery business, is worried about the health and safety of both his employees and his customers. We're putting pieces of plexiglass up at the register so that you can, you know, um, have some distance. We want our people to, to, to be safe, too. I'm trying to get thermometers where I can actually take their temperature when they come in. How do you um, reassure jittery Americans that the nation's food supply is safe? Well, I have a lot of confidence in the food supply. I mean, I've dealt with a lot of the farmers. You know, we buy direct from a lot of people. Um, and I've talked to them personally on the phone, and they said, look, we'll get you the food. Dave Lindsay has worked here for 28 years, but lately his job has taken on new meaning. How long have you been wearing gloves? Uh, we've always practiced wearing gloves, but since the whole COVID-19 issue, we make sure everybody's wearing them now. The issue's bigger than just me. It's a country thing. You know, everybody's, there's a lot of things going on in the country. People are unemployed. People need a place that they can rely on to give them the proper service and do the right things for them. And that's what we're here, that's what we do at Stu's. We care about our customers. Our customers come in seeking us out. You know, we, we have great relationships with our customers and uh, we're, you know, we're happy to be able to give the product that they haven't been able to get lately. When something like this happens and you see, you know, everybody pull together and work as a team, it's awesome. It's, it's a great feeling. Our sincere thanks to the millions of people working through this crisis. We hope you all stay safe. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.